And so for a few minutes, I want to talk, because Apostle Tom talked about how tomorrow night at sunset starts Purim. And we know that that's the Esther story. You guys have heard me preach on Esther many, many times. But I want to talk about a character in Esther that was a watchman. And his name was Mordecai. Mordecai was a watchman that sat at the gate in the book of Esther. He was an example to us of a watchman that tipped the scales at a tipping point moment in Israel's history. Do you realize that the book of Esther was the first time that God's people were called Jews? Mordecai was the first person that they ever identified and said, this is, a, this is a Jew. Before that, they were always called Hebrews, but this was the first time they were ever called Jews. And so we've talked about how Esther represents the modern-day church, the modern-day ecclesia, um, who answers the call. You, we all, I think, have probably heard the story, but we know that the crown came off of Vashti, the, the, the one that didn't care about being in the presence of the king, and it was put on Esther and how he stretched out his scepter of favor. And he said, what do you want, Esther? And God positioned her at a key time. God took her through a purifying process. God took her through a, prepare, a, a, a process of preparation so that at the right moment and at the right point of time, she would be ready to do kingdom business. Let me just say this. She became queen, and it was probably nine or ten years later before we actually find the situation with Haman, remember Haman, not Haman, okay, where Haman wrote the death decree. She'd been queen for about 10 years at that point. A lot of times we read Esther and we think that it just happens right one right after the next. But there, was, there had been a process of time that had gone on. And, um, and so when she became queen, she had no idea what she was going to have to do during that season of time. And so when, um, when we, we talk about Purim, um, it is called, in Hebraic culture, the holiday of reversals. Is there anybody here that needs some kind of reversal in your life? Come on, the whole gospel message is a message of divine reversal. It's God raising dead people to life. It's Jesus turning sickness into health. It's Jesus turning mourning into dancing. It's Jesus uh, taking broken lives and making them whole. I mean, the entire message is about transformation. It's about turnaround, and it's about reversing the curse that the enemy tried to put on us to hold us in bondage. So Purim, Purim is called the holiday of reversals. It's time to overthrow the decrees of the enemy. Paul and Ashley Lackey. How many are blessed by little Elisha down here? Paul and Ashley Lackey had a decree. They were barren. They had tried everything uh, medically. They had tried uh, all kinds of different things to conceive. They spent thousands and thousands of dollars seeing doctors to no avail. Tried everything they knew possible to try, and yet they could not conceive a child. Right after the Lord gave me the word about divine reversal, they had an encounter where Gordon Robertson prayed for him. And do you know what? In that very critical time between Purim, Purim, I'm sorry, I have to train myself to say it different. It's pronounced Purim. Purim and Passover, which is one month and one day. During that period of time, during that season that is called the season, the time of reversals, in 2015, Paul and Ashley conceived and gave birth to Elisha that year. They didn't just have one child. They had three kids real quick. Amen. And how many know there's such a blessing? But we've got to understand that the enemy tries to decree things that limit us. And what we've got to do is we've got to shift and adjust. And we've got to break off the lies. And every one of us, I'm telling you, probably have some area where a lie is hiding that try to keep us out, try to keep us out of abundant life. And so we've got to let the Holy Spirit... Speak to us so that we can come out of agreement with those things. We saw blind eyes healed, deaf ears open. We saw prodigals come home. We saw legal cases turn around. We saw marriages that were already had divorce papers signed, literally sitting across the table from one another, getting ready to sign divorce papers in a very hateful, angry divorce 
and they're sitting there with their lawyers going over the details of their marriage and of their divorce, and they burst into tears, fall into each other's arms, reconcile, get remarried, and that couple, not from this house, is in, is in full-time ministry today because God brought divine reversal. The things the enemy tried to bring for evil, I'm telling you, it's a time when the impossible things become possible. Lay your hand on your own head right now and say, God, give me a, 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 a mentality that impossible things become possible. Give me a mentality that I'm breaking out of the limitations that the enemy has tried to put over my life. And Purim is a time for God's justice against Haman and his ten sons. Last year, when the Lord spoke that to me in, in uh, June, June 15th, the Lord said it's time for the hanging of Haman's ten sons. This speaks about justice. This speaks about uncovering the works of darkness. This speaks about breaking the occult things, breaking rebellion, breaking all kinds of things that are happening in, person, in, in, in personal lives, but as well as in our national life. A time for the hanging of Haman's ten sons. It was a complete cutting off of the enemy. And last June when the Lord said that to me, he said, watch next Purim. Because at next Purim, I'm going to begin to initiate some events that are going to begin to turn things upside down. That starts tomorrow night. Amen? Now, a week after I heard that, Roe v. Wade got overturned in the Supreme Court. I believe that was the beginning of some things. I just believe that we're in such a key critical period, and casual, comfortable Christianity has got to wake up. Amen? And so Mordecai was the watchman, if you will, and... Uh, Esther kind of represents the intercessor. It's the watchman and the intercessors working together. You say, well, which one am I? We're supposed to be both. We're supposed to watch and we're supposed to pray. We're supposed to be that. So this, I, I think that we've got to really, if we actually really believed in the power of prayer, then it would no longer be a struggle to us. If we really believe that when we pray something happens, it would not be a struggle to us. When we were in prayer this morning, the Lord gave me the scripture. It's not on the screen, but it's out of 1 John chapter 5, verse 14. And it says this. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we ask of him. Come on, just lift your hands. Father, I thank you, God, for a new faith in your word, the power of your word, new faith, God, in the things that we pray, the things that we decree. God, that they're not just empty words, God, but there's power to bring change. There's power to bring transformation. God, forgive us for prayerless lives. God, for forgive us for doubt and unbelief. Forgive us, God, for not believing the fullness of what you said you would do for us. In Jesus' name, amen.